<sighs> Just a disclaimer, I did not support this movie financially. I did not buy a ticket for it. I didn't pirate it or anything like that. I went to the theater and I bought a ticket for a different movie. And then I went into the Little Mermaid Theater. So this is going to be a little bit of an off the cuff video today because I didn't have much time over the weekend being that it's Memorial Day and everything. But uh, today we're going to be talking about the new Little Mermaid, the 2023 one. I was originally planning to skip this movie altogether because I don't really like supporting these remakes, but um, I saw a lot of positive reception towards this Little Mermaid one from just various review outlets, so I was like, okay, I'm here to report back that you should not watch this movie. I think there are some positives that makes it a little bit better than things like the abhorred Lion King remake. I do think that Holly Bailey was hired for her talents for the movie, which is a nice surprise. It's not something that they've done for all of the movies. I think that a lot of the casting is really bad in this movie, but I am really happy that she was able to hold the movie together emotionally for, you know, the performance of Ariel. Just having actors in the film who can carry some emotion is so much better than the horrifying, you know, photorealistic creatures that they try to represent in The Lion King. Uh, some other positives is... I don't know, I mean, some of the shots are okay as far as the presentation goes. They're a little bit more creative than I saw in some others because they're not 100% copying the presentation of the original. And um, the neon color design of Ursula is, is alright. Like, I liked how Ursula looked in some of the shots. And that's, that's about as far as I can go with positives, if I'm being honest. The thing that really irks me about this remake and why I really don't want people to go out and support it is that... Pretty much every decision they make to differentiate themselves from the original just makes the movie worse. And I think it's very clear that all of the skill that went into this project came from the original. I think that any time it shows a difference between the original and the remake, it's clear that this new team is vastly inferior to that which made the original. There are at least two original songs in this new one, and they all stick out like a sore thumb because the melodies are very weak and one of them, the Skittlebutt, is legitimately like the worst song I've ever heard in my life. It's just very clear which songs were made by the original writers and composers and which were not, which really pulls you out of the experience. And then I think they even ruin some of the original songs when they break the context of the songs, like in Under the Sea. That's obviously a plea from Sebastian to Ariel, but in this new one, she joins in in the chorus as a backing track which I don't think makes any sense for her character in the moment because she's not she's not praising the joys of being under the sea in that moment. That's a plea from Sebastian, so I don't know why they would make her sing along with him because it kind of hurts her motivation there. Another thing that they do is when she loses her voice later in the film, uh, they still have her sing. Granted, the presentation, it's presenting it as if it's all in her head, her thought process, but I think that it was still a poor choice because it kind of weakened that effect of her not having her voice. And I think that a common problem with these remakes is it doesn't give you any room to insert yourself into the film or have your own experience with it. It's It always tells you exactly what to feel, and oftentimes that is with the music cues. But I think that's another example here with her singing in her head where they don't give you any room to just let the filmmaking carry it. They have to over explain everything and just even understanding her thoughts in this way it was just it, it was a lot and they should have cut all that out i think to go back to the under the sea song i hate the way that they restructured the shot progression in the original sebastian is a composer for king triton and in under the sea he's you know gathering all of these little sea creatures and animals who are playing their individual instruments and he's conducting them. And the finale of the song is the shot progression where it quickly edits between all of the animals in the climax of the song. And the, the new one does the same thing or it's this fast edit between all of these animals and everything. But none of the animals were actually playing instruments in the new one because they cut out a lot of the personality. Sebastian isn't a composer in the new one. And in the original, it was set up that each of them were playing their individual parts and then we got a montage of all of them at the end. But we never got that setup of any type in the new film. It's just all of a sudden we have this seizure inducing edit at the end. And I don't know why they would try to keep the edit in the new one when it isn't even in time for one. When they just broke the entire structure all together. It's things like this that just rob it of the smart shot progressions and ultimately it just weakens the song overall. And yeah, like I said, the scuttlebutt worst song I've ever heard, legitimately. Uh, I think Aquafina has 
a strange voice even for talking personally so then when she tries to rap a lot of the other actors uh didn't work for me melissa mccarthy as very slow was not it because she wasn't even trying to do her own thing she was trying to mimic the deep gravelly voice of the original ursula actor but she naturally has a very high-pitched voice so it just came off really awkward and she did not have nearly the presence that she needed for that character um so ursula just really fell flat for me personally one of my big complaints with the remakes is how much longer it makes the films the original ran in at about an hour and 20 minutes which is pretty awesome it's very succinct it's very fast paced um the new one is two hours and 15 minutes which they take longer doing everything but they also spend a lot more time um fleshing out eric in pretty uncompelling ways one of the original songs is his and it's a very unmemorable song um so i don't think that that time was used well it didn't really add anything to the experience being almost a whole hour longer and getting nothing new out of it that was worthwhile to me is a massive disappointment and i think pretty unacceptable and then we can go into the visuals and everything because you know it's a visual nightmare <laughs> as all of them are um i think this one is a little more inconsistent visually because i think there are a few shots that look nicer with filming actual on set you know at the ocean side and things like that it can look fine at times um, but then at other times it just looks horrible just like the lion king did the entire time and i it falls into the exact same trap of near the end of the movie it turns into an absolute cgi nightmare um with you know the battle against ursula at the end and everything so it, it falls into the same tropes that we've been fighting for so long and it's uh, very frustrating besides that i mean some of the little things I can talk about is just the inconsistencies in the film, logical inconsistencies. There are really strange moments like when Scuttle the seagull uh, goes underwater and starts talking to them, the characters Ariel and Sebastian. Um, it just talks underwater with them and then at the end of the conversation he's like, oh I need to go back up for air and I'm like, okay. There are some annoying moments like when Ariel saves Eric and on the beach the guards just somehow don't see Ariel. There's a really funny one at the beginning of the movie when uh, the shark is attacking them in the shipwreck when it's attacking Ariel and Flounder. There's a setup with a mirror that Ariel uses to trick the shark into getting stuck. She puts her reflection in the mirror so the shark attacks it and it gets stuck in um, what it crashes into. But it's really funny how it's set up because the angle at which Ariel positions herself against the mirror means the shark would be seeing itself in the reflection, but the film doesn't want you to think too hard about that. So there are a lot of strange choices like this that uh it doesn't hold up logically if you think about it i think that's on the minor scale of the problems of the movie but you know it's worth pointing out because the film's just very broken overall my biggest problem with the original movie which i do really like is just that i've never been a big fan of the ending being that the whole film is about you know king triton pleading with ariel to understand that her actions will have consequences but then at the end of the film he just cops out of that and is like actually yeah you were right and even if you know he sides with her in the end i wish there was more of an impact on ariel for all of her decisions i think that it's a very classic disney cop out of being like but the parents were wrong all along and uh, i've never been a big fan of that and it, you know the new one follows the same thing um it obviously doesn't make any changes to that but the one thing it does do which makes it even more annoying in my opinion is it sets up this whole dynamic with eric and his parents and then eric's parents also retract their input and their feelings and they're like no, you were right, son. So you have both sets of parents just being like, nah, the kids were right. And I was like, ah, oh, okay. It makes it even more annoying for what I didn't like in the first place. Overall, uh, this film is really horrible. I don't suggest people go out and watch it. And I, the reason I wanted to make this video is just because I feel so strongly about filmmaking that this is not the type of movie that I want to be successful, so I really didn't want people saying like, oh, this one is better. I don't want this movie to succeed because I think this is the exact type of film that's just suffocating the industry and makes me very sad that this is coming in with a really strong opening weekend. I think that there's absolutely no reason that you should watch this over the original, and it's, it's just pretty insulting that they're leeching off of the original talents of those films to put really nothing new into the world of substance. And if you enjoy The Little Mermaid, then just watch the original. That's all I have today. Um, I'll be back on Friday probably to talk about the new Spider-Man film. So thanks for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed it or found it informative, please leave it a like and subscribe. If you thought it could have been better, though, please you know leave it a thumbs down and leave me some constructive criticisms to make sure that I do better next time. Thanks, guys. I'll see you later.